What's going on, guys? Connor Late here. I have the special privilege to welcome you all out there listening to Season 1, Episode 1 of the Laid Out Podcast presented by the New York Red Bulls. Joining me here for our first installment of our brand new bi-weekly podcast is my co-host and voice of the New York Red Bulls, Matt Harmon. Doc Harmon, we are here in person, finally. What are you thinking of our new digs and how are you doing today? This is fantastic. It's it's great to be back up and going, doing the podcast. It, it's great to have a new setup. Uh, I love the idea of the show. I don't want to say too much about the name. I didn't really get a voice in the name, but I, I'm okay with it for right now. I'm okay with it. We did a little shift. I don't know. I, I, I thought we invited you to that meeting, but apparently I guess we did it. I think the Zoom link didn't make it through in the email. That's why we're doing this in person now. So glad we're here in person. We're recording here live at Red Bull Arena here. New setup in person today. We're going to have live guests. What are your thoughts on the whole setup for the show now? I love the setup. I love the idea of it. Um, I love that we're going to have different guests all the time. I love the surprises we're going to start with right away on some of the show here in episode one. And I'll tell you one thing that was awesome to just walk back into the building today after being on the road for the first couple of weeks, see the field, see the stadium, see all the improvements that have been going on. It, it's tremendous. I can't wait to be back here on uh, Sunday when Minnesota comes in. Big home boom, but are on the horizon. But we are going to start off this podcast with a bang. And that's what we're here to do. We want to have a, a big start. And I'm sure you all heard the major news that came out yesterday. It was announced. Bradley Wright Phillips announced his retirement and that the fact that he was joining the New York Red Bulls with this sporting department as a special assistant to sporting. The club legend is here today to join us in retirement. He's sitting right next to me. I'm going to bring you in. I got to give you a proper intro first. But we also have another massive piece of news for everyone out there. Not only is he coming back to the club, not only is he joining sporting, but he is joining the Laid Out Podcast as our co-host for the year. Bradley Wright Phillips, extensive recruitment process to get you in here, but the king has returned. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, my man. Welcome oh, home. We have not obviously gotten the budget approved for the sound effects. We're going to do them as we go through. I was good. I think you can stay on that. I've got a big bank of sound effects. I got <laughs> pew, lasers. I got, I got lots. Whatever you want, I got you. Yeah, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that. But I think that was pretty good. What's up, man? Happy to be here. This is amazing. Man. It's good to see you, man. I think, uh, you know, obviously massive, massive news. Retiring from the game you love. Yeah. Coming back. To, I hope it's your favorite club ever. But we <laughs> no, we think so. No, one hundred percent. But uh, tell tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of this whole retirement process was like. I know it's kind of yeah. been a, a little bit of a whirlwind get you back here, but tell us a little bit what what kind of that process was like for you. Do you know what? For like the last four or five years, I always thought about when I retire, how's it going to be? Is it going to be difficult? Will I play too long? Start embarrassing myself out there? And I just it was kind of easy, bro. Like I had one or two offers that I didn't like. I, I pictured the kind of role they would want me to play. And it just weren't for me, right? I, I honestly think I don't make the impact off the bench and being that senior guy. Yeah, and I just thought it was time. And then I had the opportunity to come here and, you know, I'd be stupid not to come back, come back home, man. I'm buzzing, I'm excited. Brad, when you think of it, you know, your career here with, with Red Bull was amazing um, on so many levels. And then the last couple of years in Los Angeles with Columbus, um, making that decision, you know, for, for you, I'm sure it wasn't easy, right? No, I mean, no. what? not many players probably say, I'm ready to be done with the game. Yeah. How difficult was it to to make the decision to say, that's it, I'm ready to move on? Yeah, it was tough. I think I think what made it easier, when I left here, it was obviously hard, you know? Like, I hated you guys for a bit. Right? <laughs> I would, like, watch results and hope, <laughs> hope we didn't do well. You know, now, honestly, it was tough to take because, yeah, it's obviously the club I love. But I had one season because the season I left, I was I was injured for a while. So I had to prove to myself that I could still score. So I went to LAFC. And I think I'd done that. I'd done enough for myself to, you know, to, to bow out. I could have really retired then. Um, so, yeah, the last season, I had a great time at Columbus. It was fun. Like, I really enjoyed it. It was, like, one of my best times, like, on and off the pitch. Not, not on the pitch, but off the pitch, like, with the squad they had there. It was a lot of fun. But I knew inside it was time. You know, I knew it was time for something else. I want to I wanna learn the other side of the game and just... Almost start again, like when I was in the academy trying to be a football player, I want to start from the, the ground up and just learn some different things and, and try and make the same impact in a different field. You're going to get that opportunity. We're now working with sporting, but we couldn't let you retire, you know, a member of any other club. So obviously <laughs> yeah, signing exactly. you to a one-day contract is 
probably the most important part of the move. Tell us a little bit, you know, why it's important to you to come back and sign that contract with Red Bull. And yeah. Um, it's, I, I don't I'm know sorry. how much money that's going to be for, for it. Is like it going to be a DP spot for a day? <laughs> like, like a what? cent. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, you know what? Yeah, I, I would have felt, it wouldn't have felt right retiring somewhere, especially in America. Like in America, it wouldn't felt right retiring anywhere else. Um, I feel like, you know, honored. I'm glad that I can get that opportunity to retire here. It means a lot to me. I wonder if he could put me on for like half a second. You know, just at the end of the game when we're winning 3 0, maybe, eight, uh, yeah, maybe someone can put a word in our text Halo or something and see if he can put in a word. Maybe that one day contract, he's going to have to sign it on Sunday. So I mean, it's official. Who we knows? could have used you the last couple of weeks. It would have been perfect. Big nah. leads against San Jose and Toronto. That's we could have, I mean. we could have slid you in. I could come on and tackle someone. I could do that still. How about from a family standpoint, right? I mean, you, you, you have. Um, your wife, your kids, you're kind of settled here in New Jersey and then you're in Los Angeles, then in Columbus. Um, has it been difficult for everybody to move around the last couple of years? Yeah, um, yeah, kind of. And with the pandemic too, it's, it's not been easy. But we, um, for the most part, we've been together. It was tough last season. They didn't come to Columbus. You know, they got school and activities and my wife's got a life too. So they stayed. That was probably the hardest part. That also probably made up my mind to like retire. I didn't want it to be something similar to that. So yeah, last season was a little tough on that end, but they'll be here, you know, come come June, they'll be here. Let, let me follow it up real quick and just say this. You, you said starting over, right? I mean, you think about your days as a kid yeah. coming up through the academy, beginning your life as a professional footballer. What do you envision for yourself now in a way, like you just said, starting over, but learning a brand new side of the game? Yeah, it's going to be tough, but, you know, without sounding arrogant, you know, what, what I've done here, I, don't, I almost don't want to come in here and it's like, just be known for what I've done on a pitch. I'm in a different field now. I just, I've got to learn. I really got to do my homework and, and grind. And I'm excited for that. I, I really am. Yeah, I think it's a great situation for you to come in. Obviously, with all your experience that you're bringing to the table and with such a young team that you have, yeah. that you're going to be able to mold a lot of young players into yeah. kind of what you think the best part of the clubs are and the attributes that you bring to it. I think it's going to be incredible for a player development side of things. Is that something you were excited? It's, yeah. it's like you're uh, stepping into a coaching role almost without yeah. being a coach. You can kind of see different parts of the organization. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, it's a good point. It's something I'm, I'm definitely going to try and do. I don't want, I want it to happen organically. I don't want to just go in. I don't know a lot of them now. The squad's changed a lot. So, you know, I'd start to build relationships and definitely if I can help out, I would love to. When you think of it from a standpoint, you know, Connor, I think you made a good point right there. Being almost a mentor, um, but not as a coach, being yeah. someone who can connect with players. And probably, you know, my time with the team from, from 2015 till now, knowing you the way that I do, you strike me as someone that could be a perfect person for people, younger players to talk to about yeah. stuff off the field, not even on the field, like the off field stuff, how to grow up as a, as a, as a teenager, making that transition into becoming more of an older player, but understanding it's not all about the stuff on the field. It's how you carry yourself off the field yeah. as well. No, hundred percent. Right. No, it's, not, it's something I'm definitely going to look into. It's something I definitely want to do. I think even me as a player, sometimes it's harder to take, you know, information or criticism or just advice from a coach sometimes, especially, Maybe some of them are not playing. It's like tough. It's tough to take that. So me, you know, with no, I don't pick the team. If I got a bit of advice, hopefully they can take it and, and go from there. You know. You not taking advice? <laughs> I mean, you never yelled at anyone. No, but that's, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If if it's coming from someone that's like, you know, not not the coach. You know, you know, coaches can be on you a lot. I think if it comes from someone that's not a coach, I think the message can get through a little easier sometimes. I think a big part of Brad's transition back into the club, obviously, might might take you on as an intern if sporting. Please, could. Bro. I get the coffees, anything you need, bro. I think that's perfect, Matt. I don't know your coffee order, but I think that's no, I'm not first order. Mass. I'm not getting Matt. I'll get leads. <laughs> you won't get that's mine. My, no, that's my ex roommate. That that's. I mean, this that's is, a big thing. I think we need. I to, like you, but this is like love. So let so let's transition into that, and it's probably more awkward for you to do it. So I, I, I'll do it. I mean, give me a couple of good stories um, of life on the road with Connor. My God. Brisky. Nah, you know what? I, I couldn't, there's so many, there's so many like fun times we've had and me and Connor spent a lot of time like rooming together. So there's nothing but laughs and jokes, but I don't have one specific. Now that I've heard I'm going to be on here, we'll, we'll save them for another day, but just know that it was a lot of office, a lot of always sunny in Philadelphia. Did and you pick that? each other? Did you guys pick each other or was that put together just organically? I can't remember. No, how it was, it was, we did because after, oh, yeah. Because I used to room with Dax, yes. and then Brad and roomed Lloyd. with Lloyd, and yeah. it's kind of polar opposites how it was. Like 
you come into our room, it was like Antarctica. Yeah. We, we always, first thing we do is step in the room, turn it way down. Yeah. You go into Brad and Lloyd's room, oh. and it was like a safari. It was like <laughs> humid. You could cut the humidity yeah, with like yeah, a yeah. knife and fork. It was crazy. But we came together. We settled on a, a, a good temperature for the yeah. room. We got similar tastes and shows and yeah. things. And he'd always record me falling asleep with, uh, my, with my phone in my hand. And that I'd was snoring. <laughs> Brad would be snoring. We we balance each other out. Even really that well. was perfect because you'd fall asleep before me. So, but who gave, who gave up on who first? Did you give up on Dax first, or did you give no, up they, on Boyd no, first? No, it was it was they, when they, they left. Were both gone, it was yeah. when they when they both oh when left. they both left. Yeah. We were both free agents we in the roommate exactly. field, and and we found each other. Yeah. The rest is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's big news. Yeah, no. yeah. No, I think it's it's uh, you know obviously. We had a lot of good times, and I think it's it's something we're gonna build on. Obviously, yeah, yeah. listen, I when I heard the news, I was oh, thrilled. Awesome. I, I couldn't keep it a secret, but yeah. I'm glad it's out there now, and we're super excited to have you back, not only on the podcast but in our club. And we know the place is gonna be uh, a better place having you inside. Thank so, you, man. welcome Thank back, you, my man. You. You're listening to the Laid Out Podcast, brought to you by the New York Red Bulls. We are brought to you in part by the New Jersey Institute of Technology. NJIT makes industry ready engineers in more than 20 fields. If it's engineering, it's at NJIT number one in the nation for student upward economic mobility. Learn more at njit.edu. All right, I want to bring in our first guest for the Laid Out Podcast in 2022 season. Well, you're, gonna, you're like yeah. a semi-guest, but now he's you're not really a guest anymore. He, now he's, he's out. Now he's full now in. Now he's now. full in, so you're not guest anymore, all right? Yeah. So put your host hat on. But we have fresh off back-to-back -back road wins to start off the 2022 season not only anchoring the New York Rebels' back line, but also notching the fourth goal in a 4-1 domination in Toronto. The captain of the New York Rebels and U.S. men's national team defender, Aaron Long. Alo. Yeah. Where's the sound bah, effect? Bah, 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 bah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Alo? What's good? What's good, boys? I want to go back right from the beginning. I hope the cameras were recording before we even started this. Because that stuff between the three of you guys was magic. That should have been the podcast. That's really, that's in depth. That's the stories that everybody wants to hear. The connection, Aaron, that all three of you guys have um, in, in your time with the club, being with Brad, being with Connor. I'll, I'll say it. There's a, there's a genuine friendship there, right? Oh, yeah. It is magic for sure. I mean, when, like Connor said, he couldn't keep it a secret. I was hearing whispers. I had to ask him. I was buzzing, man. I was like, yo, is, is Brad coming back? Like, you got to let me know. And he didn't want to tell me. It's supposed to be secret. And he's like, yeah, dude, I was over the moon. I'm so excited. Club legends here. Like, I I'm so excited, man. Do you Seriously. text Connor or can't you just go direct to Brad? Or he, now that he's gone, he no, doesn't really take I saw take Connor. Your, Connor was he doesn't in take the, your calls anymore? No, he was in the, oh, he was in the locker room. So I'm like, yo, Connor, I'm hearing some crazy stuff going around right now. Like, is Brad coming back? And, and he's like this. He's like... <laughs> I'm giving, I'm giving faces because, no sound effects, yeah. just the, just yeah. the faces. I'm, yeah, try, you know. I'm trying not to break the news, but the best part, we're trying to surprise you here on the podcast today with him. And so the fact that it already got there, I don't know who Brad saw can do. I think TMZ might have gotten a hold of him. Oh, so TMZ for you know, sure. I don't know. I don't know. But we're trying to surprise you today with that news and get your reaction. But obviously, when Ruined you have it. a... When you have a presence it. like Brad here, you can't keep that a secret. Ruined. It's probably better. I don't know what would happen. I would have exploded if I came in. Brad was just sitting here with <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is going on? Dude? <laughs> no, for real, man. I'm so excited. Like, honest to God, club legends in the building. Like, like C Liggity, BWP in the house. Like, it, it's crazy, man. It's so good to have him back within the club, within the organization, in the city, in the state. Like, it's it's just unbelievable, man. We're we're blessed to have him here. What do you learn from either one of these two when you're first a part of the Red Bull organization? Shoot, man. I don't know. My first. My first time meeting Brad, actually, I wasn't uh, I wasn't on the Red Bulls yet. I was with Seattle Sounders, and we came to play here. Um, I don't know why I was on the trip, because I wasn't playing. I didn't make the roster, so I was sitting up here in, in one of these rooms, actually. Um, Red Bulls won 3-0 three, three or something. I don't even think we were that mad at, at Seattle. We had just won Open Cup, and that's why I think we were all here. Uh, we go back to the hotel, and Brad is there partying after the game. I wasn't. <laughs> Brad's no, partying after the game. He, he for sure doesn't know who I am. I'm with a couple of the Seattle guys. He knows them. So they're like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? And I just sit down next to Brad, and he's just so cool. I bet you don't even remember this. We're in the W Hotel. Uh, and he's like, hey, how you doing? You know, you want anything? You want a drink? Like, let me know. Just being the nicest, coolest guy. I'm like, yo, this guy is a beast. And I just saw him score one of the craziest goals ever uh, when I was with Portland earlier that year. It's just like... Um, after that, it's like, yo, he's he's unbelievable as a player. He's unbelievable as a human. And from there, the friendship has has just grown, man. Seriously. 
I love that. I love that connection. I mean, that warms my heart right there. But obviously, yeah, I think that's something I think is going to be passed down through the locker room, the excitement. Obviously, it's going to trickle down from you, seeing how excited you are. But I think what role do you think Brad's going to fit in this sporting department and kind of the mentorship team part he can take over the team? What role can he fit? I see him everywhere. I see you. You know, Dennis sits outside the the, the video sessions, and he's just in the hall, like, kind of watching and, and in on the video sessions, like a part of the locker room sometimes, you could be there for sure. You could be like Ibra on, on the pitch and, and be like a assistant coach. We could use you as a scouting department. We could use you as a assistant GM. You could be anything you want, man. Like you, the bro. guys are going to listen no matter what you say. Uh, I think your presence just around the group is something special. I think for strikers just to see you and, and not only see the pictures of you, if they haven't met you yet, now you're going to be in the building. They're going to be like, oh, man, he's here. He's back. Uh, we got to raise our game. You know what's cool in a lot of ways when you think of it as a club legend like Brad is, um, and Aaron, you, you're a perfect example with so many young guys that are on the team right now, but so many homegrown guys, like it's not as if you, you need to go through that process of who is this or bringing a big name in from outside the club uh, that maybe came from another team. Everybody knows who he is, right? And then out, now it's just going to elevate everything that goes on in the locker room. For sure. Like like I said, his his face is everywhere, with whether it's in this building or it's in our locker room, uh, his name is, you know, on our on our stadium. His number's retired. Like, everyone knows who he is. Um, he's still talked about. Like I said, he's, he's a club legend. So these kids are going to be so excited when they get to meet him. I mean, so talking about Brad a little bit, and we're going to mix it in with yeah, you, Alo. I, th I think this is where we – I need a, to, to figure this out right now. So Alo scored a huge goal against Toronto this past weekend. Great header, buddy. Great header. Thank you. Uh, He's got more surface area to work with than Brad does. For <laughs> Just sure. a bit. Just a little bit. Huge forehead. Is that what you're saying? Big, <laughs> big head compared to the peanut, peanut head. But I think uh, the celebration, we got to figure out what bullhorns you're going to use. Because I see you doing it two different ways. I, see I you, didn't even know what I was going to use. I see you get, this one has been the one that you used. Then you threw up one of these. Was it that what you threw up? Yeah. Yeah. I so threw out like three different ones. I think I went like this, 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 and ah! <laughs> so I was, I was, I was so happy. I don't know. That could have maybe. I, I want to talk transition. to the goal Selly King and think about what you think about Alo yeah, and there we what go. he should be doing. I was expecting to see a heel kicks for some reason. I don't know why, bro. Ah, that, that's the next one, one now. Time. That's the next one now. I just want. One I didn't want to ruin the surprise. Imagine I do heel clicks. Everyone's like, Brad's coming back. Jeez, I didn't even think that I was even thinking. That, that could have been. I don't a, know why. That could have been a perfect tease. But I, do you want to see Alo? It's do as many horns. bullhorns as he can, or do you want nah, to see him stick to one? one? It's got to be one steady one. Then, then the people follow. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it. And Ryan Mara, like two days before, he's like, yo, if you score, you got to bring out the bullhorns, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, that wouldn't be bad, actually. That'd be a good way to return. It's yeah. just got to be that every time. just uh, Bullhorns? Yeah. You know, hates it, Danny. Danny Royer hates That's it. Good. They hated yeah. the heel clicks, bro. <laughs> they hated them. Until they love them. They hate it until they love it. Listen, I remember when the heel clicks were born. We were like, yeah, we were messing her out on the field and just heel clicking around and you brought it for a long life. time because it took me long to score so it was like <laughs> and i remember yeah i, I was thinking like yeah that'd be there, cool one day to, that would be cool to do that but i obviously only <laughs> scored once or twice and i was so excited Yo, i've actually i've done the heel click so many Bang times in yes. uh when we do the shooting yeah, game practice. and i would score in front of brad and yeah. i would do the heel click i mean everyone did it to i thought in a game one time i, feel like. I think this has to be i might have done it in a usl game i might have done some heel clicks hello next goal heel clicks and horns for sure the combo. That that's might, a lot. That that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of coordination. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. I'll look like a bull fairy. <laughs> Aaron, tell me from the standpoint, Connor said it, you know, obviously you were so excited to get the goal and it was that immediate probably relief of scoring. Uh, but then, you know, the, the Red Bull guys, the film guys, they did a great job of capturing you about 10 seconds after the goal, hands and head like this emotional, right? Like realizing it's kind of, in a way, you're back, but now really back because not only are you back on the field, but you're back doing what you do, and that's scoring goals on set pieces. Yeah, for sure. It's like you said, it's one of those moments to me that's just self gratifying. Like, yeah, I'm back. I can help the team again. Like, that's that's all I really want to do, right? Is is make this team go as far as we can, and scoring goals is a big part of my my arsenal um, and being dangerous on set pieces. And to do it so early in the season, um, it's just it's just me turning another page. Like, yeah, let's go. Let's get the season going. It's right where I want to be. What's it like right now to game in and game out wear the captain's armband? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, there's there's been a lot of important people that have wore this armband, a lot of guys that we respect, whether it's Henri, um, Luis when I was here, who's who's a, another club legend who's been here forever, Sean Davis, one of my best friends ever. Um, those are guys that I look up to. So to wear that armband after them, I just want to do it right. I got one more, Connor, and then, and then hop in, and Brad, obviously, too. 
So uh, this is this has been plaguing me for from the longest time. You're the captain. You got subbed out towards the end of the game. Yeah. How do you decide who's getting the armband? You gave it to Sean Nealis. Any mini mind mom. Like you didn't have that. You didn't have that in your head. Is it close? Is it closest guy? Is it? That's my center back partner. Or is it? No, no, no. So it's. Uh, it was decided actually by Gerhard that he's the assistant captain. If if I'm ever away with the national team or if I'm injured or whatever the case may be, that Sean Nealis is our guy that that the armband is going to go to. So it's. Um, there's no like secrets there. Like he he is the guy. He's the vice captain and. You know, he'll get the job done. I always think, like, listen to you guys talk for, for as long as I have. Like, when Dax would come out or Sasha or Luis, like, you guys being so close. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off at this guy. He didn't pick up drinks the other night. I'm not giving it to him. He didn't give me the treat. He didn't give me the He didn't give me the guy in fantasy football I want, and no. I'm not giving it to him either. Like, no. Nah, there's pe- there's, sorry, Colin. There's, there's people that know they're probably going to get it if this guy comes off. There's no one that gets that, that surprise. Like, who, me? No, it just won't happen. And that was my favorite part of, you know, whenever it was passed to me and I'm, they would ask me to pass it to someone else, you know? Like, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, go get this to Brad. I was, like, probably one of the best middlemen for handoffs ever. So if you need a go guy quick, bro, you can get there that quickly. I could get anywhere on the field very quickly and get the armband to someone if they needed it. So that was my role in this whole thing. I mean, you were kind of to, to the point of, of having Brad come on. Like, he could be the coffee guy. Obviously, I, 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 I'm not getting it, but you'll get it for him. You were the – hey. Do me a favor. I can't reach him. Just hand that over to the other guy. <laughs> there was lots nah, of things. I, I, feel like, I feel like Connor's captain material, though. Nah, you got to train and play course. with Connor. I feel like, yeah. Come nah, on. Was, That's like was, a, captain material is just a guy that everyone respects yeah. in the locker room. And there's no one that people respect more, more I think, than, than, than Connor. Yeah. Guys, for let's, sure. Let's keep this going. Facts, keep, keep building on keep this. Keep it going. <laughs> keep building on this. What else? <laughs> Aaron's booked himself another segment on the show <laughs> oh, later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I could do this all day. Hey, Lo, I want to talk to you. Obviously, a very long preseason this year. Um, you know, you, you go to Florida, you come back for a week, then you go out to California, uh, the Coachella special, obviously the weather I hear was incredible, but it was long. And then you stay an extra week in San Jose to get ready for San Jose from the prank master himself. And for all you out there listening who don't know, Aaron Long loves himself a good prank. Very childish. (laughs) I've grown. Were there, that's what I want to know is the captain, like is, to, to reference the office, is it a Jim Halpert situation where he gets a he gets a raise and he's not pranking anymore, <laughs> or what's going on? A little bit, to be honest, a little bit of that. There's no I mean, way. I know, I know, it sounds There's so no hard way. to believe, but it like I got the most satisfaction from pranking the older guys that didn't know yeah. what I had. You know, like I would take Sasha's socks before every day in training and every day come in like wear my socks and only I knew that yeah. he doesn't have his socks. That's so, how so, you integrate yourself. Into <laughs> something yeah. like that, you know, where I can like get that. so it's much true. satisfaction. I don't get any satisfaction from pr- pranking yeah. J-Mai taking his underwear. He'll be like, where's yeah. my underwear? No one knows. Yeah. It's like, I don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same for me. So it's yeah. organically phasing itself out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I still do a couple things every now and again. Like I, I got this one going for so long. Now. It's going to ruin it. But I take, I wet paper towels and I throw them over the stalls when guys are pooping. <laughs> smacks him in the head <laughs> and i just blame someone else and then i'll walk in like two minutes later I'm like yo this like uh patrick just ran out dude i think he just <laughs> ah you know people get so mad then they started knowing it was me because people would see me throw it over so i'd wear someone else's shoes and i put my feet right <laughs> under the stall put them right under the stall this so is it's like, like next level stuff right here it see it seems it seems like it but they, after they know it's me then i'll wear like last year i was wearing like amro Tarek shoes which are like these bright blue nikes and i put them under and i throw it over they can see the shoes and then I run out, then they walk out, and I'm wearing different sandals. And then Amro's like, oh, I knew it was Amro. And then he's like, no, it wasn't me. You know, stuff like that. Who's the best guy you've pranked in your time? You had some, you had some really good ones with Danny. But Royal? I think so, I think the best was probably fancy. when you were at Rebel 2. The pranks that you pulled were, like, crazy. You guys had wars going yeah, on. Yeah, there was no limits back then. No. Yeah, Vincent Bezicourt. I, I told him I was going to dye his hair lighter brown, and I bleached it blonde. <laughs> When it, a day before his parents got there. <laughs> his parents were flying in for the first time. Easter and egg blonde. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that was awesome. I got a video on my phone of it like slowly turning blonde. It was it was unbelievable. <laughs> now, don't let him fool you, though. I, he does still prank the young guys. I think every, Kate, every Kaden got a new car. And what would you do with Yeah, Kate, Kate got a new car. <laughs> Parked it in the middle of the yeah, field. I love that. Parked it in the middle of the field and rode on it with some markers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I've still told him to this day that it wasn't me, but now everyone's going to know again. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good Pretty stuff. Good. But and to I, be I, honest, they, they've phased out almost completely. It's very rare that I'm that I'm pranking nowadays. So when you were not pranking in preseason, what was going on? For for this long extended period of time, what are you guys doing out in preseason to keep yourself occupied? Mafia there? Mafia not there? Mafia, there's a couple of mafia games going on. Uh, there was a bocce ball like mafia little court there. Probably. 
<laughs> we were playing some bocce ball against each other. Yeah. But yeah, just FaceTime my daughter now. Daddy duties, you know how it is. Now you know, bro. I love now, that. Now I know. Now you know, now and you that's know a, that's party. actually perfect perfect transition. Now you know, as a father, you know these guys have kids. What do you learn from them about being a professional player and being a father at the same time and balancing it all out? I don't know, man. Or do you learn nothing from either oh, one of them no. and try and do the opposite, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, no. Maybe. There, there is a good balance that you have to have. I think there's a, a balance between being the, the family guy and being the father that you want to be, but still making time for the boys and, and those nights out. And uh, it's really good to have those moments as a team. Um, it's good for team building. It's good to learn the guys off the field. So you got to have that balance and, and make sure you're doing both. But family always comes first, for sure. How about now being um, back in the loop with the national team? I mean, after the year that you had last year of being injured, um, being in camp right before preseason with Red Bull, it, it all seems to be coming back together for you, right, in a lot of ways? Yeah, a little bit. I think that camp is more to – from their side, it's more to jumpstart my preseason. You know, it was going to be um, right when I was getting back to where I could start training full. Our season was ending in December, January. They didn't – they know, Red Bulls know, that I can't take two months off after having six, seven months off, you know, already. So, like, let's get you into camp. Let's get you going. Um, and let's get you as, as fit as possible and as ready as possible for your Red Bulls preseason so you can get into your season and, and start hot, start flying. Which you did. Which you did, for sure. Yeah. And, I mean, especially now, uh, big games coming up, World Cup year. Walk us through kind of how excited you are to, you know, kind of being competing for one of those spots, you know, to, to put that shirt on in a World Cup. Yeah, it's, it's exciting, but it's – uh, it's a job, you know, it's yeah. nothing, nothing's given, especially where I'm at right now and not being a part of any of these qualifiers. Um, uh, it's, it's something that I'm going to have to go out there and I'm going to have to earn. So I'm looking forward to it, but every game matters. Every training matters, staying healthy matters. So it's a big year and there's a lot on the line. And I know that. Yeah. I think that's what, I, you know, from seeing you a lot last year at the end of the year, it's gotta be frustrating as a player when you know, you could be out there training, even playing. I mean, the recovery that you had is pretty miraculous. Yeah, I mean, I how it. quickly you recovered and, you know, the type of work you put into it. But how frustrating is that, really, at the end of the year, when you know you could maybe be out there and help your team, but due to league rules, when you're put on the season-ending list, you can't help the team at all? Yeah, I think part of the reason is that no one thought I would be back ready for the last two games of the season like that. No one thought I would be ready to go by then. Um, but I think more more than anything, it was more of a way for, for Red Bulls to protect me. It's like, listen... Even if he is back, let's let's just not have him play these games and let's make sure he's ready to go for the next season. Just God forbid if anything happened, if he rushes, you know, if I knew that I could be back and I knew I could be playing, I would have probably rushed it even more so. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's for the best. And I'm feeling great now and I'm healthy, so that's that's all I really care about. Last one for me. Um, we'll be good to be back home on Sunday. I mean, oh, after, after two games on the road, and as Connor said, the long preseason, and even with the success, right? I mean, you beat San Jose – um, put a beating on Toronto, now back at home on Sunday um, to come back with six points. I don't know if you know this, first time that the club has ever started with back-to-back -back road wins oh, wow. to open up a year, um, so to get a full complement of points, but now have the opportunity to play not one but two games at home. Um, I would imagine everybody excited to get back at Red Bull Arena. Yeah, for sure. I mean, imagine me. I haven't played there in, what, eight, nine months. I've been coming to these games, sitting up here and, and watching the boys grind from, from afar, so I am – more than ever excited to be back here, play in front of these fans. Um, there's a lot of renovations going on in the stadium, so it should be it should be popping for everyone that comes. Um, but the group is so excited, man. It's it's good to have a hot start on the road, but more than anything, you want to win your home opener for for yourself, for the organization, for the fans. We're pumped to see you guys back out there again. And Doc, I know you got something special planned for us. What do we got going? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, mix it up the next couple of segments. We got some fun stuff that we're gonna do all during the course of the season. We have a. Uh, situation here. We're going to do something called Rank'em rank with Brad rank back em. now with the club. This is presented by NJIT, but Rank'em, we're going to talk and go through some of the top moments in your career, Brad, which I know is probably the last thing that you want to do. Yeah, I'm kind of done with football now. You're kind of, a, you're a humble guy. Well, you're not done with not it. You're just moving into another it. level yeah, of it. Yeah. So we're going to start, Aaron, with you, if that's okay. Yep. I want you to think for a second. Give me a goal that you remember, give me a moment that you remember, or a moment or two, or a goal or two that you remember playing with Brad that he scored and was involved with. Hmm. Not to not to gas him up, but it's it's kind of tough to think of one. There's so many, you know. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played with a striker that scored so many goals. So I'm trying to think of just right, a so specific. Brad he's back moment. on the sporting side now. He could be making some decisions. So we're just gonna like <laughs> <Contract> blanket, <book. laughs> blanket it across 
Oh God, you were so Hi, great. Yeah. I remember all those goals. They were no, so a amazing. Couple, no, for real. A couple of Bradsicles stick out in my head. The the old man bicycle old kicks man that bicycle. he's done. Um, one that sticks out is is the DC game where he scored uh, his hundredth goal, and it sticks out because I I didn't know he was gonna have that jersey with the hundred on. I don't think anybody knew, right, Brad? No, Maybe Sean Ruiz knew. Sean, one. Sean, yeah, what'd you go in the? Did you put that on in the bathroom? Yeah, I think me and Sean like spoke about it during the week, and then yeah, we decided it was gonna be something else, and then he come up with a change that was decent. I can't remember what we were gonna do before, but I wanted to have a shirt. I think I saw my dad do that when I was younger, and I wanted to I always wanted to do that. So here's the big question for me. Sorry, I didn't mean no. to interrupt you. But when you have that, but I'm going to. Okay. Shut your mouth, shut your mouth. <laughs> no, sure when you have that 100 jersey on underneath, yeah. and say, for instance, you, you didn't score that game, yeah. and someone comes up to you for a jersey swap, like, what's, go- what's, Pressure. Going, on? what's going on there? Inside. <laughs> you give do you know what? Knees would have been weak. Even <laughs> like, oh. I'll give you my jersey and my cleats if I don't have Later. to do this out here right now. I've had a um, few questions like that. Like, what if you didn't score? Or was it hot? But I don't think I thought like that. I think. You know, at that time when I was playing, I was really like, there were some things I would lose confidence in, but scoring wasn't that, you know, and I've faced times later in my career where it's been a bit difficult. But at that time, I honestly just thought I'm going to score today. I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think it would be that quick. Killing yeah, mentality, luckily. baby. But I, I often think back I, when people say, hey, what if you didn't score? I, I honestly wasn't thinking that. Now. I, I wanted the shirt for that game because I thought I'd score. Nobody knew about it. No, only Sean Ruiz. That's why I mean, it sticks like, out in my head. I knew, everyone knew he was on 99 and the next goal was 100. But then to see him score, everyone's like, automatically, we know it's 100, we know it's a big moment. And then the jersey pops off, it's 100 on the back. I'm like, oh, my God. So that's where Sean made it good blown. because it was meant to just be like like writing, maybe. Yeah. I think I was going to write something. I told him the to write Sharpie? something. And then, yeah. Bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> like, it wasn't meant to be real ghetto. Like, it was. But now was, it's iconic. Now it's, yeah. So shout out Sean for that. You knew you were getting a yellow for it. Yeah, I didn't. No. Yeah. yeah. Don't matter. Give me a red at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honey, <laughs> you didn't run. It, you didn't run it by like your dad, your brother. Hey, I'm no, nah, I didn't about tell any of that. No, no. What would they have said? Don't do it. Uh, nah, they would have said, yeah, I think it's cool. Probably, I'm, they uh, hope so. <laughs> they would say, good luck. Hope you score. Yeah. So, hundred goal for you? No, no, that's that's. I'm just ranking them. Oh, you, oh, I'm you just, have I'm more just, than one. I'm just saying that's what pops in my head. This, okay. The Cincy hat trick away. We were down. Um, Two, and not were, brace. What? In open cup. Was open, cup? open cup. Open cup. Yeah, hat trick or brace. I don't brace, know. What, I think some, some comeback, too. some comeback in in like the 90th minute. Uh, to that, send was that was an amazing. That game, that game was, that game was that crazy. That was against the USL team. I think that's one of my best Red, Red Bull memories. That's that's what I'm saying. It's it's such a weird game. It's it's a game as a defender where you're just like I don't know how he's doing this, but he's just taking the team on his back. Yeah. But I, my number one, number one goal. It's not even a Red Bull moment, but it's it's the first time I've ever saw Brad live, and, and I've told you a story before. Oh, um, I, I had just signed with Portland as a rookie, and the MLS All-Star game was in Portland that year. So MLS All-Star game's there. I have my credential. I just go up to the to the box suite, and I get to watch the MLS All-Star game. I'm like, great. This is cool. I don't know Brad personally. I don't know any of the guys you know, at, at all. I'm a rookie at this point. Um, and they're playing Bayern Munich, and Brad scores this goal, a left-footed volley. You got to look this up. It's It has to be the best goal of your career. It has to be. Yeah, for if, sure. If you know, Michael, I don't score goals like that. This so goal like... is unbelievable. <laughs> and in my head, I'm up in the suite like, who is this guy? Like, why is he here, you know? You're why is he not in the prep? <laughs> he needs to, like, way well from he should not be in this league. And I'm like, okay, he's gone after the season for sure. You know, there's no way. He, there's no way he should be here in the MLS right now. This guy is way too good. Um, and, and then to see the bench react, there's like Henri and Donovan on the bench. Everyone's hands are on their head like, oh, my God, what did he just do? I That's mean, you, a good one. That's put, a good one. At I the think end. that set up the whole like this guy is a legend mentality in my head. And then I get to meet him a month later at the W Hotel. And I'm like, OK, he's cool. And then a year later, I'm playing with him. Yeah. Okay. Killing I mean, him in training. The fact, <laughs> yeah, that you, <laughs> the fact that you pulled up from so deep on that, bouncing this, this on shot, the left foot. This shot is crazy. That was I, only, I only shot that because I thought like. We're playing by and we're going to be getting passed off the pitch. And I didn't think I was going to get many touches. You know me. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be shooting from outside the box. The percentages ain't high. So I never do that. Really. On your left. On my left. It's too. a wonder goal. But I promise that. myself. It's crazy. I promise myself that as soon as I get a chance, I'm having a shot. Yeah. So when it bounced up, it's like I can half volley. I'm decent at half volley. So I'm just like smacking this. What on Reese after that? That's, he had to be like, ah. I can't even remember. He probably said, you bad. probably you should have yeah. done this instead of that. <laughs> he even though you scored. <laughs> no, no. He was, I think he was happy that day. That one's not bad, huh? This, one this one's not bad, This one's friend. good, huh? This one is okay. <laughs> probably. I'm going to go. Go and then for you. it. Go for it. I have, I have two that I um, – maybe, maybe – um, I hope you remember them. Um, different, really unique places. Open Cup against New England at Harvard. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Small field. That's and one I, of my favorite goals. It was a great goal. Yeah, I like that. Like goal. really late in the game, yeah. <clears throat> in an elimination game. I remember doing that game. We were in the tiniest little <laughs> broadcast booth. I just thought it was cool because there was what, like five thousand people there, yeah. and they were all into it. Um, it wasn't in this big stadium. That's one for me. And then um, I think one of the coolest places I've ever broadcast one of the games in my time here in Tijuana, oh, man, in the man. Champions League. Yeah, that was mm. ne- never been so what happy was, to have. P. What was that Toronto score? Me. Yeah, right. Two what? nothing. Two nil. Yeah. See, my memory is so bad, Rich. And you scored Especially both. In the Champions League. Yep. You scored both. Is that I the game that where he stood on his head and made like yeah. 30 saves? Like first. crazy saves. I mean, th- Tim Parker's first game, is that the same game? Yeah. Tim Parker's yeah. first game. What an incredible problem to have. That, oh, yeah, my memory is so bad. I don't remember no, scoring no, either honestly, of those was, goals. You remember when we were flying back and forth so often? Yeah. I don't remember yeah. where we were going. Like, yeah. it, I got the worst memory. Just but that up, game was crazy. That game was crazy. That was an amazing game watching you guys run off the tunnel and people dumping stuff all over you. I mean, I know you guys have all played in different places. To me, that one... It wasn't out, coke because that was like a, it wasn't coke. It wasn't beer. That it was a beer. Nah, it I tasted smelled it. It like beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a statement. Not yeah, yeah. yeah. That oh, was good times. That was good times. That You're was, up. We that was awesome. Team. It's funny because when immediately when you talk about favorite Brad moments, it's a part of my head goes to like in the room kind of thing, just yeah. like some of the dumb stuff we would do. But I think Brad's a goal oh, immediately pops in my head as well yeah. because it's. For the for the Explain kids at, for the kids at home, and everyone listening out there, it's a bicycle, as Alo was mentioning. But it's a, it's an old man one where you're not necessarily jumping up, you're winding that first foot and then hitting the bike. You're more so falling backwards. You're, you're more like, ah, I know this is gonna hurt. You know, but lower but you know back, what's crazy to me? Old. When when I'm doing that, I think I'm high. <laughs> you have a foot on the ground. Maybe you think you're high. When yeah, I see the replay, I think like, oh, or if I see a picture, I'm like, oh, they must have caught this late. If I see a replay, I'm like, in my mind, I was like, oh, I think, you know, like Gareth Bale. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, remember, I feel like I'm doing that. <laughs> in my mind, I think I'm doing that. I watch it back, I'm like, that's not even that good. Why are they going crazy? <laughs> so immediately, that's where my head goes to. And I think the NYCFC game, obviously, Red Wedding, oh, yeah. Brad Sickle is an yeah. all-timer for me. Classic. And obviously scored a couple goals that game. But that's one of my favorites. And then my other one, I think, was down in Philly. Sean and you. Oh, that was. I mean that that one was just like a movie. I think was that yeah. Sean's debut. No, but or, I don't think he was playing. It wasn't his debut. He wasn't getting much game time. Yeah, though. but he needed that moment. He, he came needed on, like a moment. Slide one to you, banged it yeah. just like you did, and I think that was such a cool moment because that's yeah. something I always like dreamed about as a yeah. kid was mm-hmm. playing with my brother professional soccer. What incredible moment that would be, yeah. and to see it lived out in front of my own eyes, that was one of the coolest moments. Now, that's it. You know, it's funny you say that because I remember having a lot of regrets, like playing with Sean at Man City. Well, my debut, we played like Barnsley or something and we batted them like 7-0. And when I got on the pitch, Sean was just trying to set me up and I was missing. I wasn't, I was trying too hard and I thought, damn. Then he left, he went Chelsea after a while and I just thought I'd never get to play with him again. So it's, when we linked up for that goal, that was like, like real special for me. Because I never thought I'd get that. I thought I just, when I was playing with him at Man City, I just thought I, I didn't take, I took it for granted. You know, I thought it was going to be like that forever. So getting the second opportunity was amazing. And then to, to link up on a goal was like... Is that top moment for you? Now that when we're talking about it, yeah, it's definitely up there. Can't uh, say no or it'll just text you. I, I want to say... <laughs> yeah, I heard you sorry, talking about sorry, me and then there was something else that was better. <laughs> I want to say like a hundredth goal, but this is going to sound weird. I don't like that goal. I like the celebration, but I, I hated that goal because how it went in. What, like, the goalie could have saved it? Yeah, it's just... Through the legs of the defender, right? Through the legs, but it, it just it just looks scruffy. But that's the thing. Nice, if you, no, nah. one, no one really remembers if you talk about it, that's how you maybe... No, nah, no, nah, I've got to be real. I just don't... I don't love watching it back. I like seeing the pictures of it, but that goal it just annoys me that that was the 100th. Do you have a favorite goal that you do like watching in replay? Yeah, be, yeah Alo, well, Alo mentioned the MLS All-Star game, and then there was one I scored that I don't... like. One against New England, this was like... I don't know what you Oh, yeah, the volley? No, I like cut in and then held it left foot. Oh, yeah, yeah, at home. And, at but home, there's yeah. one, what you're talking about, this yeah. is the, the one I like, but Mike Grella, like... That was, that was you DC. both, you both scored like bangers that game. I yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Mike like volleyed one to me and then I volleyed it straight in. It's like, yeah. it goes under the radar, but it was like, a, I, I think that was a good finish. That one's DC at I home. Like the DC le- at home, the yeah. lefty volley. Yeah. I mean, in a way, Connor, right? It's hard to pick a couple of moments. It's for everybody. That's what I'm saying. That, I mean, I could. You tell me my favorite goal is like I only have like two, <laughs> two or three to choose from. Bangers. You know? Bangers. <laughs> Bangers. But yeah, it's a good problem to have for sure. Rank them. That was it. That's it. Pretty right. good. Before we wrap up, 
home opener on the horizon. Alo, any words for the fans out there? No, nah, man, we're just we're excited. We're gonna try to bring the brand of football that that you know that you're gonna expect from us. Um, high energy, um, a lot of transition, and, and we're gonna try to do you guys proud. We know you will, and we're excited for the home opener coming Sunday. We are excited that Bradley Wright Phillips is back in the building. If you're obviously. watching this podcast, Legend. sorry, Connor. If you're watching this podcast, <laughs> get to the game. Get out, get out your seats and get to the game. That's right. Let's you go. you'll see Bradley there. We might have a special guest there as well, another alumni. But obviously, Alo, thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule. Of course. Thank thank Elise and Kaya for yeah. lending some time for us here today. I was at the park all morning. It wasn't that. <laughs> 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 I wasn't doing much. Love that, Brad. Again, oh, welcome home, my guy, Matt. Hey. Great first episode. Good Excited stuff. to be back here with you guys today. The Laid Out Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and if you want to watch some of the fun we have on the pod, tune to New York Red Bulls YouTube to watch. Special shout out to the hardest working crew behind the scenes, Zach, Richie, Arpan, and Rich. Stay tuned for next episode coming in two weeks. But for my co-hosts, BWP, Doc Harmon, and our awesome guest, Alo, Connor Laid signing off. Talk soon, and go Red Bulls. <laughs>